Okay, the developers of a high-speed rail project in California have guaranteed that their high-speed train will cover 400 miles in not more than two hours and 40 minutes. What speed in miles per hour must the train average in order to fulfill this guarantee? Now, this time they do not give us an equation, so it relies on us to know things about um, rate, time, and distance. And I'll just go ahead and tell you this, in general, when I'm dealing with rate, which is speed, time, of course, is time, distance, how much you cover in travel, um, rate times time is equal to distance. Okay, just to give you a general idea of this, just in, let's say I'm driving in a car 60 miles an hour for three hours. If I drive 60 miles per hour, and I multiply that times three hours, this is a rate, this is the time, right? Notice the unit of hour and the unit of hour in the product is going to cancel, leaving us with the unit of miles, which will be a distance. That's typically how it works. So when you're dealing with rates, times, and distances, that's the relationship between those three things. So once I start seeing speeds and distances and things like that, 400 miles is a distance, two hours and 40 minutes is a time, all right? That alerts me to the fact that I'm dealing with a rate, time, distance problem. So this is my relationship. Now, a lot of times in algebra, when you get some sort of a formula you can use, such as this formula here, and you know things, 400 miles is distance, right? So I know distance. And two hours and 40 minutes is time. So I know time. What speed? Speed's another word for rate, right? So if I have a formula that I, I know that I can use, but I got these two pieces of information, I don't know that, I can use algebra to figure out what R equals in terms of these letters before I start putting numbers in the problem. So I know what I'm supposed to do to get the answer. So in this case, if I divide both sides by t, like so, I end up with a formula for rate, which is distance divided by time equals rate. All right? I could also divide both sides by r. We get time equals distance divided by rate. So before you put any numbers in the problem, you have the ability, using algebra, to get a formula for what you're looking for. What I'm looking for is rate, which is speed. To get speed, I take distance divided by time. Looking back at my specific example here, if I take 180 miles divided by three hours, I get 60 miles per hour. So distance divided by time equals rate is another way of looking at the rate times time equals distance formula. Okay. This was just generated out of my brain. This is not has nothing to do with the problem at hand. I was just showing you how the formula works. Okay, so I'm going to erase this so it doesn't confuse anybody. This is a formula we should know from algebra. If you don't, we're learning it again. All right, so you want to know that formula, rate times time equals distance. It can be modified to make rate equals distance over time. Our distance is 400 miles, so rate equals 400 miles. And our time is 2 hours and 40 minutes. Now, if I keep reading on this problem, and I'm careful, it says what speed in miles per hour Miles per hour implies I want a unit of miles on top and a unit of hours on the bottom. So can we all see that this minutes is not cooperating with this problem? Okay, that's not a good unit for this problem to be working with. So I need to do a little conversion here. So if I look at 40 minutes, and I know that one hour equals 60 minutes, just basic unit conversion happening here, right? Take a known fact between units things that are equal. The unit of minute on top and minute on bottom cancels. 40 divided by 60, if I use a calculator. 0. 0.66666. But if I type in 40 divided by 60 in my calculator, you can see that it equals 0. 0.66666, right? So, Two hours and 0.6666666 hours, right? Makes 2.6 repeating hours, right? So it's very important if I'm going to evaluate something that I have the proper units in the problem before I start trying to evaluate it. So miles per hour is now in the problem. But again, I had to establish that two hours and 40 minutes had to have some just hour time to it, not hours and minutes. 
So that's what I need to do to get the answer. Divide 400 by 2.6 repeating. So I get my calculator out. I type in 400. I wish there was a way to shut that off just by thinking about it. That's so off. So 400 divided by 2. Point, and if you just type in a calculator, a bunch of sixes, that might as well be six repeating. Calculators typically hold about 13 or 14 decimal places in. So if you get a whole bunch of decimal places, that's the best you can do. It comes out to 150. So the rate of this train has to be 150 miles per hour to get exactly the amount of time it takes, right? They're guaranteeing it takes no more than 2 hours and 40 minutes, right? So it could be less than 2 hours and 40 minutes, right? So what would happen to the speed here? Would it get bigger or smaller to get less than 2 hours and 40 minutes? Everybody agree a faster speed gets you there faster, right? So to answer the question, what speed of miles per hour must the train average in order to fulfill this? 150 is right, but we can even say R could be greater than one, greater than or equal to 150 miles per hour. 150 gets them there right at two hours and 40 minutes. Anything faster than 150 just gets them there sooner. And it says not more than, which means less than or equal to, or sorry, it won't take that. So less than or equal to this time, so it has to be greater than or equal to that rate. If the time gets smaller, the rate has to get bigger to make that distance stay the same. It's moving. Yeah, it's moving pretty fast. High speed, I'd say 150 is pretty fast. Hate to see what happens to like a sheep or a deer or something like that. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I don't know, you guys watch the um, Big Bang Theory, but Sheldon is a big fan of trains. <laughs> and there's a thing on front of the older trains called a cow catcher. He said, more like a cow exploder if you want to be accurate. So I <laughs> can't imagine. So it's like this little, it kind of goes like that in front of the train, and it's supposed to knock cows off the tracks. But apparently, yeah, this would probably be worse than that. I don't know.